Yeah, WrestleMania Backlash just ended, everybody. And I'm baffled. If I use that word lately? It's appropriate. I was baffled by that finish. I mean, I was, but I wasn't. For those of you that don't know what happened, the main event, I guess we can start at the beginning. So uh, for weeks, for weeks, they were promoting Randy Orton and Riddle versus the Usos in a unification match for the titles. Mm -hmm. Okay? And they promoted it, and they promoted it, and they promoted it, and they promoted it. Then they did a contract signing that broke down into this wild brawl, and uh, it turned into a six-man. Which, by the way, I need to go back because I need to know if they signed the contract before the brawl or if the contract just never got signed. So anyway, they uh, they announced that it is now a uh, it's now a six man, and uh, I was waiting for them to announce that t- all the titles are on the line or whatever, and they didn't. And it turns out, as noted in the Observer, that uh, this was always the plan for WrestleMania Backlash. This was not a planned change. From day one, it was always going to be a six man with no titles on the line. And just for the goddamn hell of it, they just promoted a unification match for three weeks and then did the angle to make it a new uh, a new six-man. So no belts on the line. So I thought, all right, well, whatever. I'm just going to do a six-man. So, and then I heard today, like, the six-man's going on last. Well, uh, as we'll note, they did a Ronda Rousey-Charlotte Flair championship match, which was the only title match on the entire show. Yes. And it was fucking great. Yeah. And we had a title change, and the babyface won. Yes. And that did not go on last. So I thought to myself, I thought, self, why the fuck is this six-man going on last? Well, something must be happening. Well, what could possibly be happening? And a nothing happened in six-man. Well, the only thing, the fucking only thing that made any sense was that Drew McIntyre was going to claim more Roman Reigns and pin him, and then we've got a championship match set up. <laughs> like, that's the only possible thing that you could do. I suppose you could also have, you know... One team pin another. One team and, pin and the and other, but... Go back to the tag team unification. Well, but, apparently they're not going back to the title no. unification, so, you know... But you could have done that if you wanted to continue that. Yeah. So what they chose to do was... Roman Reigns pinned Riddle. Yeah. What? Heat, dude. <laughs> it's not even like there wasn't even any heat. It was like you know, the match was good, and he pinned him, and it was over. And they're talking about how dominant Roman Reigns and the Usos yes. are, and it's like no fucking shit, Roman Reigns. The problem is how dominant Roman Reigns is. Not enough. He has no fucking challengers. Yeah. Like. I realize what they're going to say is, well, if you'll notice, you know, Randy was outside and Drew was outside and they didn't get beaten. So now you can do Roman Reigns and Drew and Ro. Yeah, you can do those matches. But, bro, does anybody here think that Drew McIntyre or Randy Orton is pinning Roman Reigns? Of course not. So the fucking least they could have done is have one of them pin the guy. And so now maybe you think, okay, well, perhaps, maybe one of these guys. But no, Roman Reigns pin Riddle. I mean, the match was really good, but fuck me. It was pointless. What in the fucking shit was the point of the last month of my life watching this storyline? It was a very good, pointless pointless match. God. I mean, it was good, but after I saw the finish, I was like, I may as well have been watching Raw or SmackDown. The only way that's like a premium main event main event premium is if events. fucking Roman it's... Reigns gets pinned or something. But no, Roman Reigns pin Riddle. whoop de fucking do Main event, the bloodline of Roman Reigns and the Usos versus RK Bro and Drew McIntyre. Dude, finish aside, this was an excellent six-man tag. I'm gonna... They worked their asses off, and it was really good. I want to talk about the two negatives before, the ma- before we get to the good part of the match. And one of them isn't even the fault of anyone involved. I'll start talking about that one first. If you need to know anything about television production and commentary on World Wrestling Entertainment television shows, the peak, the pinnacle, the defining moment happened in the middle of this match. Roman Reigns is a very dominant world champion. Drew McIntyre, at the time, I guess still, seems like the most likely guy to challenge him next. It would be a big, big, big effing deal if Drew McIntyre were to hit his finish, the Claymore kick, on this dominant champion. So, 
Roman's got the heat on Drew for a while, and he he's so confident he brings in the, both of his belts to hold them over his head and remind us all he's a dominant world champion. And then he finally turns around, and Drew is there to boot him right in the face with his kick. That sounds awesome. Now, I've described what I think happened. Because the camera cut in the middle of all this, and it's very unclear what actually happened. And if you, if you think I am making this up. Actually, I, I go ahead, but I, I actually disagree. All right. But go ahead. I'll finish my point because uh, shortly. If you think I am making this up, if you think I am exaggerating, I will give you the words. I should have written down the quote. I will tell you, Michael Cole, the voice of the WWE for decades, lead play-by-play announcer, whose job it is to describe what is happening in the ring and, and explain the significance of this to you, the fans at home, has to ask, did the challenger just, did Drew McIntyre just hit the Claymore? He wasn't sure. Even though it happened in the middle of the ring, it camera cut in the middle of the move, it wasn't at all clear what happened. Roman was on his feet. Drew ran at him. Roman was on the ground. What's in the middle? Fill in the blank. I don't know. Well, my disagreement, Vinny, is that, uh, yes, the camera did cut in the middle of the move, but it was in the middle of the move. So, in fact, I did see the last part of the move, which was Drew, his boot hitting Roman and then taking the bump. And my argument was, yes, that was a fucking Claymore. What the fuck did you think that was, Cole? He's at ringside, brother. I know he's watching on a monitor, but yes, it was the Claymore kick that Drew flew in with one foot and hit the guy in the face and landed on his back. That was the Claymore. Cole. So that's comment one. Comment two, if you haven't watched this match, you want to go back and watch the show, and I, I really recommend you should watch this match. It's very good, but you need to fast forward the first part of this. They get the heat on Riddle for like an hour time passes i can feel my beard growing empires are rising and falling and the amazon rainforest species evolved and then died off and finally there's a hot tag to drew but jesus this took forever once there's that hot tag to drew the match actually starts then it's just awesome but i was so fucking bored for the first portion of this but again, after that point, it got great. Everyone's running wild. All the baby faces got a chance to shine one one by one in this match. Orton's in there RKOing everyone. There's a point where he, uh, Roman Reigns appears to be hitting with a Superman punch out of nowhere, but Randy sees it coming, hits the RKO out of nowhere. I should mention, by the way, this crowd loved Randy Orton. He this he's probably the biggest baby face in the entire show. So if had he pinned Roman at some point, they would have loved that as well. Uh, Orton runs wild. Riddle runs wild. Roman catches Orton with a Superman punch off the stairs in the floor, so he finally got that Superman punch in. They tease. Uh, in fact, they deliver. Drew is put through the table. This starts a parade of dives. It's left with Riddle and one of the Usos in the ring, and Riddle hits an avalanche RKO, but in the process, Roman tags himself in, and Riddle hits this RKO, and he stands up, and Roman spears him and pins him. Yeah. As noted, pointless. I know I'm going to have to hear this shit. Oh, why don't you get the bub- Bros, listen. Someone needs to pin Roman. That's it. No one believes anyone in this company is beating Roman Reigns. At least have some... It could have been Randy Orton. Randy Orton's super over. Randy Orton versus Roman Reigns for the unified titles. Perfectly fine main event. But then he should have pinned Roman Reigns. Same with Drew McIntyre. They they just couldn't do it. Roman Reigns. I was so baffled when the show was over. If I, Even if this match would have taken place before Ronda and Charlotte, I probably would have been a lot less baffled. It's like, ah, six man, not, nothing on the line. Roman wins again, whatever. But they put it on last after the only championship match on the show with Ronda Rousey winning the women's title. So it's like they had to do something. Nope. Just uh, Roman... Hitting another fucking spear and pinning some bloke. whoop de fucking do So anyway, that was uh, the show. Overall, I mean, if you're a, if you're a WWE fan, if you, if you uh, like watching WWE, good show. I mean, we've... I mean, it's, the booking's no worse than any other WWE show. No, and the wrestling was fine. We've covered this three-hour show here in just over 30 minutes. There was only six matches. There was a ton of downtime. 
but yes, on the whole, the wrestling was good. I mean, honestly, if you just watch the, the three matches I really liked, which is Cody, Ronda, and the main event, you just watch those, that's a, not even an hour probably of in-ring action, but it's a really good hour. So yes, an easy thumbs up. Old yeah. Excalibur. We've got heat with him. <laughs> I was clearly joking when I said they sped up his voice. I had nothing to do with this, Mr. Caliber. <laughs> oh, now you have to apologize. His name is not Excalibur. His first <laughs> yeah. name isn't Xavier. I like Excalibur. He used to be <laughs> yeah. a Caliber. If anything ever happens like AEW goes under or whatever, you know they always have those those uh, those commercials about drugs, and they have that guy that reads the list of side effects. Yes. One out there, I, I, it's potentially lethal taint fungus. <laughs> that would certainly be bad. And I am not exaggerating that at all. <laughs> My point all is, is they, I will they never re- take this drug under any circumstances. They- Potentially lethal taint fungus, lol. <laughs> lol. I hate him. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.